to search what last time yes okay all right can you summarize what we learned last time mom i was there ma'am i you wasn't there that's why i'm asking you all right so i'll just give you a small brush up of whatever we saw last time we almost like got over with the lesson it's a very small lesson okay so we know that we need food in order to survive right so the process of consuming food in order to give us energy is known as nutrition okay so just uh, take note down of whatever i'm saying so consumption of food in order to give us strength or to help us work in our everyday life or to help us grow is known as nutrition okay it is a process of consuming of food so now we're going to see where this food comes from okay we get fruits from plants and we also get from animals okay so plants we have rice wheat fruits vegetables we have all of them whereas in animals you have meat egg fish okay so these plants and animals these are the food varieties okay different varieties of food that we get okay so you can see that we've classified all these uh, food that we're eating into different uh, you know sources of food so rice over here we get from plant or a dal plant salt it's from the nature it's not from the plant water it's from the nature again chicken from the animals spices from the plant oil from the plant milk from the animal sugar from the plant and mutton from the animal so these are all just examples of food where we get from plants and animals in the nature okay so here um we are going to just make a food for example you're just going to take rice you're going to add water you're going to boil in order to cook the rice and eat okay so this rice water and salt here is the ingredients okay now if the plant is going to make the food it's using carbohydrate sunlight oxygen hydrogen it's making all this in order to make food that is through the process of photosynthesis so all this carbohydrates hydrogen water and everything is the ingredients of the plants okay so note this term ingredients all right so there are different parts of the plant that can be used for consumption okay so we have the leaves like curry leaves um you know curry leaves is there mint leaf is there so many herbs and all is there they're all leaves right so we can consume the leaves directly okay and uh, this flowering plants some are converted into flowers some are converted into fruits okay so the fruits are easily consumed by us like mango lychee we have different fruits right and also uh, some of them are stems like mushroom turmeric potato onion which is also known as the bulb they're all stems so they can be directly consumed by us okay so we have two important systems that is classifying the whole plant body that is the root system and the shoot system the root system consists of the primary root and the secondary root okay the primary root is the starting point of the root that grows secondary root is the end branching point okay and then the plant grows into small leaves and then the leaves grow and then there will be small buds that is growing and in the buds there is even um, the fruits that is being growing and there is a flower and there is many other things that's growing okay so you have the leaves you have the bud the buds are the ones that blooms into flowers you have the stem that is the green portion of the plant over here you can see and then you have the fruit that is the leaf is getting converted into a fruit over here and you have the flowers you have the part between one leaf and another leaf Okay, between one leaf and another leaf, there is a stem. Okay, the starting point and the ending point. There is a stem over here. So this portion is called as the node. Okay, and uh, on top of the leaf, specifically, it's called as the internode. All right. So, so the shoot system is the most edible part of the plant. It's not only the shoot; it's also the root. Can you tell me examples of vegetables that are roots that can be consumed? uh potato onion onion potato all are roots yes ma'am they are not roots they are stem what are the roots that is edible carrot carrot mm. very good carrot radish all they are roots okay now coming to the animals we are done with the plants we get different sources from animals what do we get we get dairy products we get meat we get egg okay 
so we're getting all these products we're going to do different type of farming with animals similarly like for getting rice or we're getting crop what we do we do farming right in a land you grow the crops you harvest the crops in order to get the the results that is the rice and everything cereals pulses and everything similarly you need to farm these animals okay so uh, what are the animals that we get dairy products from cows cows then goat okay this camel also this buffalo also okay so all these are uh, all these animals are known as cattle okay so we get milk okay. butter curd cheese and all okay so we grow them in a large farm in order to get all these products so this farming is known as cattle farming okay cattle farming is not only like done for uh, these purposes it's also done for meat okay so mutton um, and other uh, non veg that we get from the animals that's done through cattle farming so chicken how do we get chicken chicken is not a cattle because we don't get dairy products from them right so chicken on all these birds they are known as poultries they're known as poultries okay the animals from which we get dairy products are known as cattle the animals from which there is the birds not animals birds that from which we get meat or we get egg they are known as poultry okay so poultry farming is done in a large farm hens and chickens um, all these birds are grown okay and we also get fish that is basically the seed food and this is called marine culture or fishery it's also known as fishery all right so these are the different sources of animals that we get from plant for like for consumption purposes so you can clearly see over here all the products like let's classify them you have uh, cows goats buffaloes that is all the cattle hens and ducks that is the poultry tiger lion like and they're just normal animals okay that we don't get direct food from so cows you know do cows eat chicken if you give chicken to the cow will it eat no ma'am yeah. why not because it is a uh, herbivore very good so the ones that consume only plants are known as herbivores okay whereas even uh, whereas hens and ducks that is a poultry they consume both plants and animals so the ones and even us human beings we consume both plants and animals so we are known as omnivores okay whereas tiger lion and all you give them plants they won't even like go and smell it also okay they just not that type so they eat only animals okay so they are known as carnivores all right and what else did we see we also saw what are the things that we getting from the plants we have so many things that we getting from plants that is only for eating purpose i'm saying other than eating purpose we get so much other things we get wood do we get we get cotton from which we wear clothes we get we live with the plants we don't we cannot survive without plants right so only for eating purpose we get fruits vegetables cereals pulses medicines honey okay so these are the things that we get from the plants all right and we also saw how the uh, seed is growing in order to bloom either into a flower or into a fruit okay so first you can see there is a two kidney shaped structure over here so these kidney shaped structures are known as cotyledons this is how a seed looks okay now for example you just take um, a green piece so how does a green piece look like you will have like something like this have you seen it yes green yeah. piece and it, it's like you break them it becomes like this otherwise it's just a small sphere okay when you break them it becomes like this okay so these are known as cotyledons okay this is just a normal uh, seed structure i've drawn over here okay so these are known as cotyledons so these cotyledons they are rich in starch okay what is starch do you know what starch is no no okay starch is like sugar okay it's not like the sugar that we eat it's a sugar of a plant okay you know the plants make their own food with the process of photosynthesis you know that right yes ma'am 
Okay, so what food do they make? When we are cooking in the kitchen, we make masala, we make rice, we make sambar, we make so many other dishes. So what does the plant make with photosynthesis? They make starch. Okay, all the starch is stored in the leaves, which uh, then grow into a whole plant. They become a fruit and it becomes stored in this cotyledon. So this cotyledon is full of starch. Okay, they're very rich in starch. So this, from here only, the like if you're sowing a seed in, into a soil, you can see a small, like you cannot just simply sow a seed. You can see a small shoot that is on top of the leaf. Sorry, top of the seed. Okay, this small shoot is known as the epicotyl. Okay, and below the small shoot, just, just don't note on anything right now. I'll give you time. Okay, listen carefully. Just below the shoot, you have a small opening that is called the hippocotyl. Okay, so the hippocotyl only will open up to the epicotyl. Okay, so then you have a small layer that protects the seed, which is known as the seed coat. Okay, so even if you are uh, taking a green peas also, you can see actually a thick, like if, even if you're eating cooked green peas, you can see a thick layer on top. If you remove that layer, there's a small seed inside. That layer on top is only called the seed coat. Okay, that it just protects the seed inside. Okay, the seed is nothing but like the baby, it's like the embryo, right? So you need to protect, like for us human beings, when you're having, there is a baby, it is inside the stomach, right? So stomach is protecting the baby. Similarly, so this is like the stomach for the seed. Okay, there's a seed coat. Okay, so you below the hippocotyl and the epicotyl, you have like a root system over here, a small uh, opening like over here. Okay, from here only this epicotyl and uh, hippocotyl will emerge. This small opening is known as the radical. Okay, so the seed is there, that is the embryo. It becomes a, the epicotyl will develop into a small shoot. The shoot will become a whole plant and it will again become a fruit and again the same thing will happen again. It will again become a seed and everything. Okay. So this whole thing is the embryo. What is an embryo? Do you know what an embryo is? No. Embryo is a baby. Okay. So when us human beings also, when you are very small inside the inside a mom's stomach, inside a mother's stomach, we are an embryo. Okay. We are an embryo and then only we'll develop into a baby. Okay. So an embryo is like a small thing like this. From here, we're becoming a whole big baby. Okay. So it's like a small cell, cluster of cells. Okay. So here, the embryo of the plant is the seed. Okay. And this is actually the homework that I gave last time. Okay. Never mind. So now you can just take down notes of whatever I've thought so far and you can ask me any doubts. So just take down notes of this and all is just like examples, okay? These and all are not required. You know what is important, right? Just take note down of all the things that's important. I'll be asking you questions. So just go through it. Take note down of whatever I thought. Okay, any doubt you had so far? Do you understand my teaching? Yes, ma'am. Okay.
Are you done? Yes, ma'am. Okay, take note of this page also. Note this down. And tell me if you're done, okay? Oh, I'm not. All right. So I'll just ask you certain questions from the lesson. Just make sure you are able to answer it. Okay. Do you find that all living beings need the same kind of food? I'm repeating the question. Do you find that all living beings need the same kind of food? What, mom? I'm asking you a question. Do you think that all living beings need the same kind of food? Yes. Same food. Everybody eats chicken. Everybody eats fish. No, mom. No. no. Why no? Because some animals are herbivorous, some are carnivorous. Not only carnivorous, it's herbivorous, some are omnivorous. You won't say humans are carnivorous. <coughs> okay, now tell me why can't humans be carnivorous? Think, think. Why? Humans cannot be carnivorous. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, what is the three classification of um, organisms depending on what they eat? Three classifications are there, no? For organisms depending on what they eat. What are the three classifications? Mom, plants. No, no, no. Herbivorous? Herbivorous, carnivorous, omnivorous. Okay, what means herbivorous? Who, uh, the animals that eat plants. Okay, what about carnivorous? The animals that eat meat. And omnivorous? The animals that eat plants and animal, animals. Okay. So, non-vegetarians, are they carnivorous or are they omnivorous? Carnivorous. So, they are not omnivorous. See, omnivorous are organisms that eat both plants and animals, okay? Without plants, no human can survive, be it vegetarian or non-vegetarian. Plants is very important, okay? You can't just cook chicken and eat, right? For cooking chicken, you need to add vegetables. You need to add oil. All this oil, where is it coming from? It's coming from plants only, right? You can't just eat chicken raw, right? Only lions, tigers, they just find meat, they eat it. They are carnivorous. We are called omnivorous. Okay? Okay, ma'am. All right.
so you know that some animals eat other animals and they are called carnivores some others eat food from the plant as well as animals which is called as omnivore so everybody have different kind of food that they eat okay okay so can you tell me any five plants and their part that we eat like um, you can say root carrot root radish like that tell me five root radish no and don't tell me the same example what i told tell me a different example okay ma'am uh, root beetroot okay uh, stem uh, potato very good leaf spinach very good fruit uh, apple okay one more tell me an example for stem um potato it's oh okay for it also okay okay now Fill in the blanks. Okay. Tiger is a dash because it eats only meat. Carnivorous. Very good. Second question. Deer eats only plant products, and so it is called dash. Herbivorous. Okay. Third question. Parrot eats only dash products. Mm, plants. Very good. Fourth question: The dash that we drink, which comes from cows, buffaloes, and goats, is an animal product. Milk. Okay. Last question: We get sugar from dash. Sugar cane. Very good. All right, I think we have brushed up almost everything. Okay, do you have any doubts so far in this lesson? No, ma'am. Okay, so just a one more small thing. So you can see this in this small in this seed. This is small shoot that is growing, right? So I'll draw over here. This is the seed. You can see a small shoot like this. okay that is growing so if you put this kind of a seed if you put them under a soil nicely this plant will grow okay so these kind of seeds are known as sprouted seeds okay so i'll just show you images of sprouted seeds See, can you see? Yes, ma'am. They all have a small growing. Okay, all these are known as sprouted seeds. Okay, all right. With this, we're done with this lesson. This also noted down. Just noted down in notebook. Oh, ma'am. Okay. So we'll start with the next lesson. We'll just have a introduction. We're going to see different components of food. Oh, okay. So what is the meaning of components This is the heading of the lesson So what does the word components mean
Can you tell me what components mean? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Tell me. Okay, it means parts. Okay, normally components means parts. Okay. Or um, yeah, what it contains. Like for example, components of air. So if you have air, what else are the things you will have? You will have carbon dioxide, you will have high you will have uh, hydrogen, you have nitrogen, you have uh, pollutants, you have smoke. There are so many particles in air, right? Is even nitrogen. So all these are known as components of air. Okay. okay so now there is a, for example, uh, there is a chicken dish. Like, um, for example, a sandwich. Okay. So in a sandwich, what and all is going to be there? There's going to be bread. There's going to be chicken. There's going to be um, tomatoes. There's going to be... Um, mayonnaise, mayo, then you're going to add cucumber. So all this is going to be there in a sandwich. So these are the components of a sandwich. Okay. So now we're going to see components of food. All right. So over here, okay. we saw in chapter one that we made a list of all the food items that we eat. And we also identified the food items that is eaten in different parts of, like, you know, where we can eat, right? Like, you know, um, uh, we are, you are from which place? Which city are you from? Hyderabad. 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 So what is the national Hyderabad food that, Hyderabad dish that you guys eat? Chicken biryani. Chicken biryani. So Hyderabad is known for Hyderabadi chicken biryani, right? So I am from Chennai. Okay. So here in Chennai, what we eat is we don't have a specific dish that is rich over here. Here you get everything. Okay. There is a street where you get Hyderabad food. There is a place where you get Arabic food. So we get all kind of foods over here. Okay. But Chennai is mainly known for its, um, uh, what we can say, we have, we have nice rich biryani over here. So mainly even we are known for chicken biryani only. Okay, but the chicken biryani you make is like in Hyderabad, it's different. The chicken biryani we make is different. Okay. And uh, if you go to New Delhi in that side and all, what is more famous over there? Chaat. Right? You have a lot of chaat item. Okay, you have Pani Puri, you have Bail Puri, you have all this over there. Okay, so different parts of India itself, we have different food components that they eat. If you go to Kerala, what will they have mostly? They have more of coconut, more of coconut dishes, more of um, coconut oil made dishes. They have, you know, puttu. You know what is puttu? No. Okay, so puttu is like their national dish. They have uh, banana chips. So banana chips, all this is made by the Kerala's. Okay, so a meal can consist of, now for example, I'm making a meal. A normal meal, for example, it has chapati, dal. And it has brinjal gravy or brinjal curry. Okay. So another meal, it can have rice, sambar and vegetables. A lady's finger and all that. Okay. So different meals, you know, there are different, different things. Like we have chapati. Chapati is made from the pulses. We have chutney. Chutney is made from the plants. That is the vegetables and leaves and salt and pepper and everything. So all these salt, pepper, vegetables, dal, cereal, pulses, all these are known as components of food. All right. So, um, uh, so all these are different, different components of food that we have. Okay. So what do different food items contain? We are going to see. Okay. Now, I'll just uh, like a small example. Now in Punjab. Okay. They normally eat roti. Normally in Punjab, they eat roti. They are famous for roti only. Okay. So this is roti, that is the uh, dish that they're eating. What dal they will have? They have rajma. You know what is rajma dal? Yes, no. Yeah, so kidney beans. Okay, so rajma. And then side by side dish, what they have? They have vegetables. Other side dishes, they have curd. They have ghee. All this. Okay, so now... 
coming to roti what do you think roti is rich in hmm? like do you know what roti is rich in why are we having roti okay now your mom and all tells you have a lot of fish fish is very good for your it's very good for your health why do they say eat lot of chicken it's very good for your health but they always say eat lot of fish that is good for your health you are non vegetarian only right mom both okay so why does your mom tell to eat fish more than chicken why do they say fish is more healthier why why not chicken mm. mom that is good for eyes why are they good for eyes mom that protein more than chicken very good so the high thing that they have is protein okay even roti has protein roti has calcium also and it has it is rich in vitamins you are notice punjab people are very strong why it's because of the food that they eat okay now coming to rajma what do you think rajma is rich in pump seeds it's rich in what um, like it's rich in protein it's rich in calcium mam calcium on calcium it's rich in protein actually okay rajma is rich in protein and it has a lot of carbohydrates okay and it has a lot of iron iron fiber also it has no vegetables again you know it has high in vitamins it's high in protein okay high in fiber okay now curd again you know curd is rich in carbohydrates it has what else is a uh, curd have mm, calcium calcium very good calcium then you have potassium so what is all this potassium calcium protein vitamin mineral what is all this all these are only components these are the things that is present because all these are food right inside the food you have all these these are known as components of food all right so ingredients they contain some components that is needed by our body these components are known as nutrients if you consume nutrients only you will get nutrition okay so all these proteins calcium vitamin carbohydrate iron mineral fiber calcium potassium carbohydrate all these are nutrients that is present in the ingredients of the food that we eat the major nutrients in our food are carbohydrates proteins fats vitamins and minerals this is the major nutrients that we consume we have carbohydrates we have proteins we have fats we have vitamins we have minerals these are the main five major components of food all right can you tell me examples of carbohydrates carbohydrate rich uh, food Mm. potato corn bread all these are carbohydrate rich foods okay noted down okay note down everything i have taken so far
Okay, and then protein foods. Tell me examples of protein foods. Fish. Fish, very good. You also have poultry. We have beans. We have egg. All this is protein-rich food. What about fat food? Mm. All the fatty meals like butter, cheese, curd, all these are dairy products are all fats. Okay. And vitamin yeah. foods? Vitamin. Vegetables. Vegetables and fruits. Both are there. Similarly, minerals also vegetables and fruits. Okay. Have you noted down everything? No, ma'am. Okay, take your time. Oh, one okay, all right. So we saw different components of food over here so far. Now, um, any doubts you have so far? Any doubts? No, ma'am. Okay. So with some simple methods, we can test that whether the cooked food or the raw ingredient that contains more of the nutrients. Like for example, Mm, you're making um, carrot, you're going to put carrot in sambar. So will the carrot have more nutrient when before cooking it or after cooking it? What do you think? It can be right or wrong. Anything is okay. Just tell me what you think. Before cooking it. Okay. So why do you think it's not after cooking it? Mom, after cooking it, uh, the minerals, uh, vitamins, everything will go into the sambar. Okay, all right, you're right. Okay, so we clearly know that because of heat, all these minerals and everything will melt away from the food. Okay, so the test for presence of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats are simple to do as compared to test for the nutrients. Now, there is a small test that they're doing. You're taking a small quantity of food or item or a raw ingredient, be it potato or carrot or anything. You're going to put two drops of iodine solution. Do you know what is litmus paper? What, ma'am? Do you know what is litmus paper? No, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, in next year, when you go to seventh grade, uh, you'll learn about litmus paper. Okay. Or actually, in this it's the last lesson, you have litmus paper. So what there is a small paper uh, that is used for indicating if a substance is acid or if it is not acid. You know what is acid and base? Yes. Okay. So to find if a substance is acid or base, this litmus paper is used. This paper, if you're dipping it in acid, that paper will turn into red color. So if the paper turns red, that means the substance is an acid. If the paper turns blue, it means the substance is a base. Okay. Similarly, so litmus paper is like an indicator. Okay. Similarly, here iodine is an indicator. 
okay so what you're going to do you're going to take a small component of food and you're going to put two drops of iodine in it and and what happens if the, it will turn uh, bluish black in color so what does this bluish black color indicate bluish black color indicates the presence of starch or presence of carbohydrate okay so if any substance you put iodine drops it turns bluish black color it means it has carbohydrates okay so here you have a carbohydrate testing experiment so what are you doing you're adding drops of iodine to the food component taking potato over here the potato turns bluish black so bluish black indicates the presence of carbohydrate okay note it down Tell me if you're done. What are you done? One minute. Over my okay. Okay. So um this carbohydrate, why are we testing? We're just seeing that if carbohydrates is present in our food component. Okay. So we saw five important food components that we have carbohydrate proteins fats vitamins and minerals so now we are going to test only these three important components that is carbohydrates proteins and fats so now we are done with carbohydrates okay so normally all the carbohydrates that we consume it is made up of starch and sugar okay note this also down so carbohydrates it contains starch plus sugar okay now we're going to do a test for protein okay 
okay so what you're going to do you're going to take a small quantity of food item like for example fish so small fish raw fish okay without cooking it you're just going to smash it make the fish into a small paste okay you're going to put it in a test tube okay and you're going to add 10 drops of water so first taste of fish okay or any food substance it can be any substance okay now for example i'm using potato itself i'm going to mash the potato and use it, it can be any substance okay and what am i going to do i'm going to add to it 10 drops of water okay once i've added 10 drops of water i'm going to nicely shake the test tube and then i'm going to add two drops of copper sulfate solution copper sulfate is one of a solution i'll show you the images so copper sulfate solution i'm going to add this is a short form for solution okay so copper sulfate solution i'm adding and then now i'm going to add again 10 drops of caustic soda okay you know what soda is right but this caustic soda it's a different it's like normal cooking the cooking baking soda that we use okay so caustic soda we're going to add to the test tube we're going to we're going to shake it well and then what happens this fish paste will then convert into violet color so here the violet color shows that there is a presence of protein in the food if it doesn't turn into violet color that means there is no protein okay i'll just show you the image So it's like a blue powder. Can you see? This is only copper sulfate. Okay. This is caustic soda. All right. You can take a note on of it. Okay. I'll just finish one last. Um, it's already time. Okay. Just uh, go through this. Note it down. Oh, okay so now we saw that the different components of food that is the carbohydrate proteins fats and all these so now we're going to see the last test that is test for fats this is nothing just take a small piece of paper what you're going to do is you're going to just going to crush the food 
okay now for example i'm taking potato itself or french fries okay or normal chicken or anything i'm just taking any food okay i'm just taking potato i'm going to crush it in a piece of paper so this piece of paper it will have oil patches okay if there's any water then you have to just let it dry for a while this make sure the paper doesn't tear okay so it will have small oil patches and these oil patches will show the presence of fat okay it looks something like this can you see oil patches like this is it visible hello yes, yeah so these oil patches show that the presence of fats are there okay so now and other also other substances we don't have tests for vitamins and minerals okay we only have for vitamins and minerals are almost present in almost all components okay so um, what these different components do to our body that's what we're going to see okay so note this down this is your homework question i'm not going to tell you um, now itself okay what these different components do to our body now you know that fish is good for our eyes because it has protein so why is chicken not good for our eyes so what are the other functions that all these proteins vitamins and do why are they classified as proteins carbohydrates and why are they not just one food that means they have different different functions right like similarly like how a car in car you have an engine you have the gear you have the petrol part so all these different parts are components of the car so as the engine is used for running the car motor is used for properly maintaining the heat of the car the petrol part is used for consumption of petrol like this different components of food have different functions and different jobs i want you to find that out and i'll be asking you in next class okay note the test for fats and let me know and also note on the homework over me okay another question is note down this question also so there is proteins uh, carbohydrates fats vitamins and minerals for all these five important components i want you to give me names of any two foods that is rich in this component over mom okay any doubts you had so far everything was clear no any doubt all okay right yes okay all right we'll see next class then okay and i will be uploading every time i finish one lesson i will upload the notes in the resources column of the uh, wise app so you can get uh, the notes from there okay after every lesson okay ma'am okay bye bye